As a young, hungry MC just discovering Hawaii's underground independence scene, the first few individuals that welcomed me and my crew with open arms was this man. His crew, Homegrown Massive, was one of Hawaii's first conglomerates consisting of producers, MCs, DJs, artists, and elder statesmen of Hawaii hip-hop always opening doors for the next generation. His ear for sonically building music from hip-hop, reggae, drum and bass, electronic music is uncanny. His knowledge and experience on life is priceless. This man, I consider him the Dr. Dre of Hawaii hip-hop, sculpting and crafting Hawaii sound. This is the man, Daniel Garcia, a.k.a. Danny One. Bless. What up, Danny? What's up? How you doing, Kev? Bruh, I'm so stoked to get you on here. So stoked but, to be here. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, definitely, man. So let's go. Let's take it all the way back from the beginning. So are you originally from Hawaii? Um, I wasn't born here. I was born in California. Okay. What part of California? Um, in L.A. Okay. Montebello. Okay. And um, my father moved here when I was young, you know. So I grew up between Big Island and Oakland. My mom moved to Oakland. Well, what part of Big Island? Um, Kona. Okay. Okay, I'm bad with Big Island, but it's Kona. That's the west side. And, okay, and Kau is totally separate. South side. South side. Yeah. So, so you never knew that Taco was in Kau? No, I never knew Taco Tell here. Actually, I had a studio with Taco for a good while. I worked on his uh, A-side album. Okay. Me and Chris J, we did some beats oh, on that. Oh, nice. So we talked yeah. about that, which I feel like is not... I know he doesn't like talking about it, but I feel if we're doing history... You got to talk about it. It's what happened. Posterity, you know? Yeah. So you, you guys, can't, you you can't be there in the picture and then want to Photoshop yourself out. Oh, yeah. So mm. you, you guys actually uh, engineered some of that or recorded? Uh, or? Just made the beats. I oh, made the beats. Yeah. It was all done in audio resources up on uh, Young Street. So you and Chris, shout out to Chris. Yeah, Chris J, for shout real. Shout out to Chris J. Man, that's my mentor. So you guys made the beats for A-Side. It's, no, we made like two beats. Oh, two beats. Okay. Three beats? Who's two the beats. other producers on that? I don't remember. Wow. I don't remember who the other producers is. This is crazy connecting the dots on this because, I mean, I, I only mentioned A side because I want to talk, talk a little bit more about it. Yeah, I like the know? beat. Oh, no, we did do three beats because we did the same beat that that Bubblegum beat that was uh, the, the guys from New York. Um, I forget their name. But we did a Kikaida loop. We and, did a sample Kikaida. Yeah. Doom, what? Do, doom, do, do. Okay. Was, that was a tight beat, right? I almost just didn't want to give that, but oh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go look for that Kikaida loop. <laughs> I'll try to chop it up on my own. Yeah, that was a, that was a monster loop. How'd you guys link up with uh, Taco and A Side? Who'd you know from the crew? I knew Taco from like just being down at um down, what do you call that? In uh, by the airport, the white stage and lighting shop was right next to Duran Sound and Lighting. Okay, and um, we just got to know each other. He was coming up as a DJ, and I was right. already playing. And we became friends, and then we actually lived like half a block from each other. Right, right. In Moiri Lee. Did you come out? Did you come up DJing first, producing first, or were you more like a b boy? I was graph writing. Gra oh, graph, graph yeah. writing first. I was just graph writing. First, got known for just writing, and then was it Danny One or you yeah, Danny One? Yeah, so D A N I. Yeah. One. Yeah. And uh, what crews did you roll with back then? The MIAs, Out to Bomb Crew, and just pretty much me and uh, Zach Alfrock. This. Uh, this cat that I also grew up with, Big Island, he used right. to live in New York. He was okay. a local kid. And then he ended up in Oahu. I moved here with uh, the mother of my kids before we had kids, you know, right after high school, June right. 10th, like 1985. Oh, so you graduated from Big Island? Yeah, June 10th, 1985, I moved here. What What's, what school did you graduate from? Uh, Haleoho Ponopono. Wow. Which is crazy. one of its city of refuge. It's one of the first uh, continuation schools with a great teacher and her husband, Auntie Diana Key. And, George and it was a really that school made a difference in me. It uh I was just kinda not really into being in line with, you know, behavior and <laughs> well, because you know, the world's gotta reward you. Things right. are rewards based, you know. If you got no stimuli, what's your motivation? Yeah. You know, so I she was really nice and she really Auntie Diana Key really made a big difference in my thoughts. And um with that I I actually just ended up GD because my my ex, who well, my kids with was going to come here, and I, right. I didn't want to go back to Oakland. I didn't want to be stuck in Big Island. Mm, it was just okay. too not enough for me, you so know. Did you start writing in Big Island, or when you came to Oahu? Oh, I've been writing since before in Oakland. Oh, yeah. so you were a writer? Yeah, I was writing from when I was like seventh grade, dude. Like, Ooh. yeah, me and this little kid, Ronald Wong, TRM, and Danny One, we would we would hit all the, you know what I mean, the yeah. AC Transit, the Muni. We just ride bus all day and tag. So what was, what was your, um, do you have a crew back then or just you and your homies? TRM and Danny One. The little Chinese guy, Ronald Wong. The <laughs> Ronald Wong mark. Yeah. So then when you moved, so when you moved from the mainland to the Big Island. Yeah. Did, I you, did you meet anybody that knew what 
tagging was a bombing. No, he said, everybody used to get mad at me. Why are you writing on shit, bro? And it's like, I don't know. I ran on shit. I'm Mexican. I can't even help it. <laughs> it's innate. It's innate. <laughs> it's in me. So then there was no hip hop. No, there was people. And, you okay. know, like, I mean, I got, there used to be pictures of, uh, that were in the Big Island newspaper of, like, still Shane Doran. He was a little, he could do all these, like, uh, the head surfer, spins. Yeah, Shane Doran. yeah, yeah. And he's a little kid, though. Right, right, right. You know? But yeah, he was a little ripper in uh, shoulder rolls and head spins. And, you know what I mean? He's one of the per- people I definitely remember. There was a few people in Big Island. But when I went to Big Island, I was I'd already started. So being that it, there wasn't, like, really anything except for surf and, right. you know, that. And I would just junkie out on b-boying and right. graph writing, you know? Oh, Beating myself because... Every time you come to Kona, it's one school, and everybody's like, oh, bro, what's up? <laughs> try, out. Like, try you out. <laughs> like, try you out. So then when you moved to the Oahu, you met up with Chris. How'd you meet Chris? I met Chris, I think it was through Trans. You know, it, who, trans, was, who was the first? Uh, well, because I knew that from uh, Rhythm and Rhyme. Okay. Well, who Doc was? and Ace and Chris J. So and what is Rhythm and Rhyme? Explain they were they were, a, they were a group, a musical group. Okay. Yeah, they were rappers. They, oh, nice. Yeah, they were... They were, they had some shit going on. And what style? What style of like uh, rap did, did they do? Was it more like a New Jack Swing type of style? Yeah, yeah, okay. it was like that nineties period. It, it was so they're they dancing right, and though. rapping. And yeah, Doc Rock was man. He was around for a lot of years. So that crew was Doc Rock. Yeah, uh, Ace the beatboxer. Okay, he was a preeminent beatboxer right. those days, and um, Chris J. Chris J. And then man, I forget the other brother's name. And I think Daniel J. was doing some beats for him. Rest in peace, Daniel J. Well, and Daniel J. Was, was doing like hip hop, like like he was he, he was down with them. Dang, hey, rest in peace, Daniel J. Yeah, no doubt. He's so that crew, so you met, you linked up with them. I hooked, linked up with Chris J. Right, he was uh, engineering for Rod, who owned gear, and uh, we'd work some things out to like get some time in there because prior to that, we were just doing four track cassettes. You know, we had, we had got it pretty down. We had, we had our beats ready. We were like eight beats deep. You know, we were going to do 12. 10 to 12 was about the span that time. So no MCs, just making beats? No, we had beats and rhymes. Like, I, I had oh, beats. Oh, you were rhyming, you were rhyming and Chris Well, and Chris I, I was backing up Trans and uh, Mike, Mr. Mouse, and, like, that's what we were doing, like, Light Up the Doobie. And right. We were doing all kinds of um, Heads Will Be Rolling, and there's a bunch of that stuff, too. That stuff never really got released. But um, that was really the stuff that was the foundation of the Homegrown Massive because right. we started out with doing that. And then we were having an open mic because there just wasn't any open mic. So we had one what, at... What year was that? Like 92, 91. So you guys put on... That's when we met Jamal. Okay. Jamal left his ID at the door, came in, ripped the mic, and had to go back <laughs> for his ID. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yo, come here. And then like two weeks later... What event What event was that? An open mic? That was... We we, we held it at okay. the uh, Pink's Garage, or Pink's Cadillac, excuse me, on Ina Road. Right. And uh, it was just, you know what I mean? Just a, a, I think it was like a Wednesday night, like hip hop event, okay. open mic. Jamal showed up, and then two weeks later, like Mari from Radio Free Hawaii had us opening for Ice Cube, Crazy Tunes. Like two weeks later, yeah, and WC. That's so we, we 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 had Jamal in, and then we ripped that show, and then that show. So had, you ripped that show as Homegrown Massive, no, or as, as Lyrical Buzz, Lyrical Buzz, and then the second night because it was two nights had um, the Magalanas, Dwayne and uh, Dexter Magalanas. They were part of Urban Joint. So they did the second night, a uh, rough mode. Okay, yeah. Oh, they're I remember that. Rough mode. Okay, so yeah, there. I like rough mode. Lyr- okay, lyrical buzz was consisting of me, trans, and Mr. Mike or Mr. Mouse. Mr. Mouse. Yeah, Mike. Okay, Mike. and then you guys met Jamal at that open mic. Yeah, and you're like, yeah. You just and then Chris J them. was like right there at the same time, like because we were we were looking for things to expand on and record. Yeah, because we were already like four tracked out, maxed, bouncing tracks, and we're like, man, we need more, <laughs> you know. Tracks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? It's good though because I had already been mixing sound, so I already had an idea. I've been acquiring equipment from like XSDB, right? Kurt Weigert, and you know, people, um, Eric at uh, Hawaii Stage and Lighting Sound Services, and I was just getting pieces. And it took me some years to get it together. I ended up with a thirty-two track studio. Nice, but it was so much. It, it all got lost because it was just too much to keep. It's, it's so much more compact now. The records was just, I mean, I wonder if Size and D, uh, DMFD is still got their records because, man, it's an obnoxious amount. It hurts your back. Yeah, definitely. They're moving all that stuff. And every time you want to play, 
And it's like... So when did you transition from being like a writer, um, graffiti head, to like producing? Was it always in you? you yeah, it was always kind of in me. Like, right. You know what I mean? I'd always knocked out beats like by hand on desks in school. Right. And like, you know what I mean? Like, What was the first record you sampled? Do you remember? Um, man. Or one of the first records. You can, oh, man, I chopped up that. I, I looped that. I got drums from that. Man, there were so many. There... You know, that time already I had S900. Okay. Oh, and, nice. And, and I was looping, and Chris taught me how to chop and to disassemble and reassemble. Wow. Shout you out to You know, Chris. like, yeah, Chris Joe was, he's, he gave me a lot of foresight, like, wow, so you can do this. And it really made me rethink myself. You know, and then at the same time with sampling, I started to, I've attained the skill of playing piano that, like, I don't even know where it comes from. Right. It's, it's beautiful. It's a reward. It's a reward for. So you'd sample a piano note and then play it out. Actually, anything. I would. I would sample my friends. Like, I had this beat that was uh, an M1, right, and at least it's SR16, the S900, and then my tone, my friend Tony, doing um, doing this part from Led Zeppelin that was uh, Daisy Confused, boom, wow, 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 and so some of it was recorded, some of it was looped. Right. And Jamie Aketa from Broken Man, was, he helped me a lot. You know, that guy was another person that they helped me get my beats to smooth out. My beats were all mm-hmm. right, but, you know, with you throw live parts over it. Right. You know what I mean? Lindy and La Hella, they'd always throw percussions in. Wow. Yeah, it would. So it just would, start layering. Yeah, it would just layer. You know, layering is a beautiful thing, adding to yourself. So at that time, when Christian was showing you these techniques, where did he, where did he learn it from? Man, I'm not even sure. He's Probably from, Radical, he, he's from Radical here. Rob, too. Radical yeah. Rob. Yeah, Radical Rob had a lot of you know influence. He's so a, would be, he's would a be real one monster of the first producer. People, yeah, one of the first people that you've known that started sampling, chopping beats. Chris J. Chris J. Chris J. Yeah, like, and I was, too, because right. I had S900. And so, so when you guys liked, I was just was taking like, parts, you know what right. I mean, and like looping. And then he taught me how to chop and, and to reassemble. reassemble yeah, brain. how to chop and slice and. You know, that man, it just multiplied. It was. Then where did the name Lyrical Buzz come from? That's for Trans. Yeah. Yes. How'd you guys? Who knew MC Trans first? Um, actually, I had a landlord. <laughs> I had a <laughs> landlord, and they knew I was into DJing and making music. Okay. You know, because I was always making noise, and um, they brought Wayne and Mike was their nephew, and they're like, "Hey, these guys want to rhyme." So you know, people started showing up, and like. And I was already like pretty much down the road, like yeah. just doing my thing because, you know, music gives me peace, bro. Right. It's like yeah. it's like it's meditation for me. I could put everything that is everything, and mm, um, yes. it don't it don't get in my space. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just it's it's heaven sent, bro. I'm really grateful for it. So it's your made. La- so your landlord, yeah, introduced. Yeah, trans. she 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 was my landlord. Oh, and and trans MC trans is a. Uh, and I was her nephew. Mr. Mouse is her nephew. Wow. They're like, hey, you check out my nephew then. Right. And I was like, oh, tell him come then. What you is know? Trans' is really? Uh, Wayne Medeiros. Wayne Medeiros. Yeah. Rest in peace. Man. Yeah, rest in yeah. peace. So you, so this is what area is this? Were you guys living in Makiki? Were um, you in town? We, well, it started in Waterhouse Street. Okay. In Kalihi. And then ended up in Moyilili. Okay. And tra- where, 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 was, where was MC Trans from? Kalihi. Kalihi. Yeah. Was he down with anybody? Rhyming with anybody? Or was um, just like in the house? Yeah, he's, he got he got boys and everything, yeah. but they weren't MCs. Right, right, right. You know, they're just you know hits from Farrington. Okay, so the Latin landlord said, "Yo, I got these. I got my nephew. Yeah, and I got his friend Mike. Yeah, yeah. They were already like, and they came, and you know, we just started throwing it together. And I'd already actually been just doing stuff with Heinzky. Okay, Heinzky. Yeah, Heinzky. You know, who was Heinzky? Heinzky is uh, um, Troy Heinz. He's a uh, well man. Way before any of that, me and him were doing shows for like. China's surf meet in Waikiki. What? Yeah, like hey. back in the day, like in the eighties. Like spinning for them, or like yeah, yeah, like spinning, and, and he'd be rocking a mic at the at the the surf meets. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, he'd do all kinds of stuff with simplicity. Who like Johnny Sexton was another really influential. Wait, so Heinsky was that the MC on he was, uh, his album? They were Naked Natives. Naked. Double J and Heinsky. See. And they were all about sovereignty. They're all about Hawaiian power. And I never. They knew were. That. They were before actually any of the sudden rush. Trip. So wait, Naked Natives was actually a real crew. Yeah, that was two guys. I thought that was just like when no. Buzz and Fame said it in the rhyme. No, no, that's Naked a, Natives. That I thought cats. they were just fooling around. No, those are two cats: Heinzky, Troy Heinzky, Troy Heinz, and uh, Double J. 
and they were more on that sovereignty tip rhyming. That's what they were on. That was what? their trip. Is That's, there any? Did you do any music with them? And, I did. Yeah. You know, everything is. Actually, I'm lucky what I have, right? And that's really because Bahi, because I gave right Bahi out and like he put it on the web and oh good, you know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. man, I lost hey, it. Hey, shout out to no Bahi. Yeah, no doubt. When I got that those recordings back, man, it made me cry because so many of my friends had died. Walter Sole. Oh yeah, shout out to Walter. Yeah, bro, I love High Walter, Chief. bro. Man, High Chief was a man. Do you remember when you first met High Chief? Yeah, him and Big Dave. Yeah, Aiga? yeah. yeah when did you first yeah, met family, meet, bro. meet the Aiga family? Yeah, because I was I was known. I met them in the clubs at uh. At Liquid Surf Den. Okay, because when I when we were I, doing Thursday nights over there. When I met there. you, I felt like that's Capital Fat. Yeah, there's there's like there was like a uh, I felt like you and like a, there was a connection. I just like a random I felt connection with you and Aiga. All yeah, the time. I was DJ for them too. Yeah, my rights. Yeah, and then you know like my family ended up living my rights. I've had a lot of connections with Khalid. Right, right. I got a lot of love for Khalid. But the different difference between like you know High Chief and them like man High Chief they, was he was a. Beautifully intelligent being. That's though, what man. I mean. Man, he was. He broke the mold. I he was say. amazing, bro. Like, right? I remember when he passed away and seeing such a complex, incredible, beautiful being. And East made a beautiful shirt for him. Yeah. But it's just like, wow, how do you take that three dimensional infinity and put it in a yeah. two dimensional image? So people that don't and know. Big know up Chief. to Rock Aeroscience for oh. helping, like, you know, come down here for his, to do promotions for his, like, funeral and things, yeah. you know? Like, that's a love to rock it, dude. No so, doubt. So people that don't dilated. know High Chief, you know, because this is like Alanui Mele trying to, you know, I'm trying to, like, chain together, you know, the branch yeah. to all Hawaii hip-hop. Yeah. Um, speak on who High Chief is. High Chief XL was the head MC. Him and Money Mike were from Mayor Rights. Big Dave was their manager. And um, Jeannie, who was their cousin, man, she she did songs with me in, like, Abstract Root. Um she just stuff with me and uh, Orko, the psychotic alien from San Diego. Shout out Orko. Yeah, she, she was incredible. Jeannie's yeah. amazing, bro. Like, she's really, she's crazy, too. She's clairvoyant. She feels things. Yeah. So, like, it was always a trip being so around she her. was Walter's cousin? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's yeah, Walter's cousin. Jeannie. And then Walter, M vicious yeah, MC. Yeah, bro. He, he was actually the bouncer. Yeah. When we were doing Liquid Surf Den, he's a bouncer. He'd be spinning. And then when we open up at the mic, then in the night, he just come murder it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, so that's what you, when you first met him at Liquid yeah, Surf Den. Yeah, yeah. He was just just doing the, the door, and right. like, he come murder the mic. So then as it got, you know, we started developing a relationship, and, you know, we did it for a while. Did you, did you do a tracks with um, High Chief? You got yeah, some yeah, tracks yeah. They got some that, of that on, that, that on that thing that's on YouTube. Yeah, any, any uh, stuff that no one's ever heard of, or that's lost? Yeah, lost. Wow. So much is lost. Yeah. You know what? Like, the of all the tracks that are on there, it's just forty something, I think. Wow. And there's like a bunch of people on it. It's um, and it's a constant mix. And that was before there were CDJs, right? So I had to do it with like, cut and pasting. It was a lot of work, but that was a uh, posterity for a time. It's time to put this away. This has been. Mm. I'm grateful for this being. Yeah. So I need to complete this. Right. In homage of like that section of my life. Right. Those people that I lived. And that have passed away, like Sarandi. Sarandi was an incredible. Oh, shout out to Sarandi. Yeah, rest in peace. Too. Man, I mean, we might as well go to Sarandi because I mean, when I when I first came on the scene, I love Sarandi. Sarandi, bro. man, he he was all love. I never knew the guy for nothing. He's like, bro, no. he's love, bro. Sarandi was amazing. Was, was he from here? No, nah, he's from California. And how did you link up with Sarandi? I think it was a KTUH. Oh, crazy. Yeah. Was he going here for school? What was? Nah, he had family and kids. Yeah. Okay. Man, he was one another one who died too young yeah. too. You know, it's like. He had so much potential. How did uh, Astro uh, Plains, How did, how did Srundi, Srundi pass? I'm not sure. It was something to do with his heart, I think. You oh, know, man. health. Same like Walt. Right, right. You know, live to die. Mm. Death, life, death comes. It's the the final blessing of life. So, yeah. You know, it's like you're lucky. It's not that we die. It's that we even get the chance to live it all. Yes. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, true. You have to embrace it. Yep. Not trip on it. Like, time is of the essence. Yeah. So you know. So let's rewind real quick. Sorry. Lyrical Buzz, you guys linked up with Rough Mode, which was two members from yeah, Urban yeah. Joint, yeah, yeah, which yeah. was the brothers. Because Urban Joint blew me out of the, man, I was working for White Stage, and we were doing uh, Aloha Tower, yeah. and Urban Joint, the four piece, right. those, those four guys, they came out, and I so was that like, was Whoa, um, who are these cats? Because I was already doing it. I was like, man, who are these cats? I was feeling them. You know, they were like serious. They, yeah. they were like not... Perpetrating, they yeah. were like real. Oh, that was one of my one of my a few one of my first hip hop shows. I remember seeing Urban Joint because it was a Magdalena's brothers. 
Yep. Um, Tees and Tad and uh, Smacks. Smacks. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Smacks. No doubt. And I, I mean, Smacks and Tees too. I'm talking to Smacks on Facebook right now. We'll get him. We'll get him on. We'll get Tees. Yeah. Brothers, Dwayne yeah. And well, that family in those... general are talented. Yeah. Surfers, skaters, yeah. MCs. You know what I mean? So then they created. Did they already have Rough Mode already within Urban? Joint, they were. Or already, that became. I think when they separate. did the split. Okay. When they did the split because they weren't agreeing with what Matt Young, what they what he wanted to do. Oh, him. he was managing them. Was he? Managing? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because they're opening for everybody. Yeah, because Matt Young. Yeah. They're opening for Cypress, I remember. Right. Matt they Young was there, for, okay. you know. And I knew Matt because I was working st stage and right. doing shows, you know, concerts and conventions. And, you know, that that was actually, I got to say, if it wasn't for my job yeah. doing conventions and concerts, doing sound and lights as a labor, you know, technician, I probably wouldn't. I Because I got to know Mari and Sheriff Norm and, right. you know, yeah. and, you know, got a big up. Big shout out to Sheriff Norm because yes. he made a huge difference in the creative scene in the '90s here. Like, yes, because you know it was almost like he was gambling, but his gambling was do bad religion. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Let's do the Ghetto Boys. Let's do DJ Quick. I never, I never heard it that, put that, that way, but he but was. But it kind of was, bro, because was like, there wasn't really a lot of. You didn't know if he was gonna make your money back, you right? Know? And that was right over here at C Five. Yeah, men. Yeah, and you know it's funny because we had Sean Speedy Lopez on. And he talked about Sheriff Norm, you know. Yeah, and Norm enough. made a huge difference, bro. And He's and Mari, you know, yeah. for Golden Voice. Yeah. Like, yeah, they they made huge differences. They and because they knew me, I they threw me on a lot of things, right. you know. I a lot of respect and love to them because right, right. that way I got to get my feet wet and because you know, when you first get on stage in front of people, it's oh, like, yeah. oh, you're naked. Yeah. <laughs> so you're DJing for a lot of a lot of Yeah, big, I've been DJing years. a while already. So right. I was but when you're on the mic and you know it's the more it's your own thing, right? Right. So you playing other people's music is one thing, but when it starts to be your own thing, yeah, you know, not self aware but self consciousness, you know. So how did lyrical buzz eventually evolve into home grown massive? Just cats like Buzz and Aisha, Caspone, like walking in us and us Goodfellas, they were called at that time. Us and us Goodfellas yeah. was Aisha or and Casper buzz. and Buzz. Yeah. And how did you meet? Um, they Casper walked into the studio. They walked into the studio. We were. Recording like, hey, yo, we want to run for you, man. It was like, <laughs> all right. So then, you know, we let them go. And then, you know, we just denied them. And same like Jamal, you know, we we're always open to ever. That's right. why, you know, being open to you was nothing because you never know who's going to be that great love, that great influence, that great mm, inspiration yeah. in your life. You know, if you shut that out because your ego tripping too hard, you're cheating yourself, bro. Yeah. Don't cheat yourself out of inspiration because at some point in life, it runs out. You know, if you can keep it going, yeah. that's one of the biggest challenges as a 50 plus year old man is to stay inspired, to stay thinking, to stay in it. You know, yeah. like how because, man, this this whole beautiful ride ends. Right. You know, you got to appreciate it. And that's one of the things about the past. I don't know. Man, we had a beautiful. It was great. It was amazing. Yes. I don't know if we all appreciated it enough. Yeah. I'm, well, that's what you know, I'm, like you don't know. It's that's the age old saying. Never know what you got till it's gone. gone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why, you know. We but it don't got to be like that, though. You can. You see, that's where elders and, and you know, being loved by people that are yeah. having elders comes in is that, you know, yeah. the, the value. But when we all live so in the moment that, like, all that matters is right now and me getting minds. Right. It, it kind of plays everything. It does. We devalue even ourselves. Mm, and I think that's kind of what happened with music in general, you know, and the scene and the quote unquote. The culture nowadays. But anyway, let's rewind real quick because I want to yeah, yeah, work, work, work away. Now. Nah, dude, that's all knowledge. Knowledge, and I love that stuff. I love it. Um, so Homegrown Massive starts. So it's the same crew pretty much. And then what up to um, Mouse? MC, MC Mouse? Um, he kind of just started doing his yeah, own thing? He, well, he just stopped rhyming so much, right, you know? Right. After when uh, everything started to fall apart, and like that's when I actually started getting into Jungle and Drum and Bass right. because the MCs, there was too much grumbling. For not enough, you gotta put money down, dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like shit ain't free. Yeah. Electricity don't pay itself. Gear don't buy itself. Mics don't repair themselves. Yeah. Speakers. My gear, time. Don't you know what I mean? CDs. Yeah. Not even. I wasn't even tripping on my time. Right, right. You know what I mean? But I was taking away from my kids and my relationship. You know, and my family and. But it's okay because that was my family too. Yeah, yeah. So but, one point, um, Homegrown Massive. So what year was that when Homegrown Massive pretty much started? It was like ninety three. Nah, like ninety one. Ninety one. Yeah, ninety ninety one. So you had. Trans, you had you, yeah. you had Chris, then you bought. I don't even have a clear timeline of what, in my memory of what the years were. I'd right, have right. to look it up. You know what I mean? And then Buzz came on, Aja came on, 
Yeah. Surundi was considered. Who was considered? Yeah, who was yeah, considered massive? Yeah, yeah. Surundi, yeah, the yeah. Magalanas brothers, right. um, Double J, Heinsky. Um, man, we had so many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then we we actually got together with T Double and like you know Bizarro and the uh, Wild Kingdom from L.A. And like, mm, okay, yeah, we, there's a bunch. Man, there's so now, much. Who was, in, real quick, yeah, a Case that, from Oregon and. So who was the Wild Kingdom? That was Bizarro and Ruckus. Okay, so Bizarro and Ruckus. And those yeah. guys are from where? I met them for Jamal okay. from L.A. Oh, from L.A.? Yeah. Because they were here for a minute. I remember them being in yeah. the Cyphers. The yeah, God yeah. Bizarro. So those guys were never a part of the Abyss? Uh, they were boys. They They're were boys. homies. They were close. Right, 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 right. I wouldn't say they weren't part of it, but I don't know if they were. They were, they were cool like that. Yeah, they. Yeah, yeah. you know, they're all brothers. They're, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So then, okay, so then this is great because Homegrown Massive's there. Everybody's DJ Static. Yeah, massive, Monty. massive, Monty. Yeah, that's right. where uh, that's where one night stand got it and Sweepy. Right. So one night stand. Speak on Stan because he, is he is he New York? Is he? I don't know what happened Stan to him, at? but Stan was a monster, but he could rhyme. So, cool. so when when I, when I first came to the scene, I learned about cipher bullies, and there's a few cipher bullies, yeah. which was one night stand, stand and most Buzz def, one, and Buzz one, definitely straight. I'm dude. I mean, I don't. Well, I, I remember I, them doing that to Funk Dubious even. Oh, nice. <laughs> but Stan was like a machine, dude. Yeah, he's a machine. A machine. He's so, like, so he was down with homegrown. But you know, it's it's like it's like biology, you know? Yeah. Nature will come fuck you and eat you. <laughs> but 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 it's kind of beautiful because it is. it's not personal. No. It's just what it gotta get nah, done. It's gotta get done. Right? It needed to happen. the intimidation. Like Thanos, you know, like oh, 100%. things just gotta get done. It's just nature. You things. Know, and I wouldn't I mean me. And I like that about Stan, that you know, that hunger that like And he, you know what's funny? I don't think he knew it. He knew what he was doing was a good thing. Right. A lot of people was like Either either it's a sink or swim, right? You're either gonna bite back or get bit, right? Right, and bite back and get bit. That's, yeah, that's what it not? is. So, yeah, you know, what I mean, usually if you bite back, they won't bite so hard next time. So speak on one night stand since we since we, we got you on the mic and you. Yeah, you know, Stan was. Where was Stan? Where was one night stand from? Um, I know from here, like Honolulu, just in general. I, I don't know exactly where he was born, but man, he was a monster. How'd MC you link like, up with Stan? Monty Static and oh, Static. and uh, Sweepy. I did a bunch of stuff for Sweepy too. But Sweepy was B-boy from Sweepy. New York though. Yeah, right? but he lived here. What what made him uh, move to Hawaii? Do you know the story? I think his family. Okay. And then he got with Janice, his wife. And they had kids here, you know. Yeah, so, so I tripped out when I was here, and I was like, "Wait, Sweepy!" I was like, kept telling people, "Wait, that guy isn't that guy like rocks like rock steady like New York, yeah, New York." Mr. Wiggles was, got him in. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, he battled Mr. Wiggles out here to get into yeah. rock steady. And then when it started drying up out here, he's just like, "Man, I'm gonna go to New York." So was Statics, at one point we all wanted to go to New right, York. Yeah, everybody wanted to go to New York. So was Static's Mecca, Rude Funk? Right? Was, that like a, going to Mecca was that a different thing? Static's Rude Funk? Oh, yeah. That, that, was, that, was, that was its of... own thing. That was its own thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I, wonder, I don't know what happened to Monty. Yeah. Oh, he's in California right now. Yeah. I mean, I keep in touch with him spot. I'm trying to get him on here if he ever comes back to Hawaii. That's cool. Because he played a big part with um, on, on um, Radio Free. Yeah, right? no doubt. With the listening party. No but doubt. anyway, so moving along. So Homegrown Massive is going on. But then all of a sudden, this influx of new kids come in. Was the Abyss? Or? No, no, no. Because they were there, and they can't even deny them. And, no, no. Oh, you're talking with, about with the, the Humanakas. Yes. Okay. The high so, state. Yeah. So boom, homegrown. The massive. Humanakas. Yeah, they knocked me out. My, that, that was through Buzz Aguio. Okay. Like that. That was that. That arm of people and right, right, right. You know, they came in and yeah, they were tight. I remember. So you were both. So the homegrown masters were there. You had you had like you know you had Buzz and, and then you had, that created uh, high state. High, yeah, that created high state. Right. So how did how did how did the birth of high state, which was Invisible Incorporated too, right? And Who's the first? I mean, how did High State evolve from Homegrown Massive? From the Humanakas. Humanakas. Yeah, that was the Humanakas. That was, you know, High State was there. Right, right. And we all, you know, evolved into so, that so, together. I mean, I can't say all their names, but, but Humanakas, yeah, Six Cents. Size cents, One was in it. Size. Yeah, like there's all kinds of cats in it. Man, you know, it was so deep and the abyss was so deep. I, I swear, like 25 MCs. Yeah. But at Soul 69 or at Midnight Troglodyte, Min, DJ Min's show. Yeah, Midnight Troglodyte. There you go. Yeah, That's right. that was on Fridays at midnight, right? Okay, now on K two H two, right? Yeah, but it always bleed into. Was it bleed? In, did it bleed into each other? So so sixty nine. Well, we cross over. We were right, all right. boys, so yeah, we, yeah. We show up at each other's things, you know. What I and, keep and we just all take turns rocking. I keep you know forgetting what I mean? DJ Min's show. Was it called the Chocolate? The chocolate, Midnight the Troglodyte. Midnight chocolate. <laughs> was on K two H two. My bad, Min. Um, so wait, so okay, we got we got high state, right? Yeah, Min and that, is a big influence on me too. High state, that that high state, I would say it would be nine. And East too, actually. No, Min is nine. High state would be like ninety five. Yeah, the, we were a few years in. Like, yeah, probably, yeah, probably about 95. five years in. So we, okay, yeah. did, 
I always consider them, you know, we always I consider them like the Wu Tang of Hawaii kind of. You know, yeah, well, I thought the Abyss was Wu Tang of Hawaii. Right, but then the Abyss came in. So let's talk about the Abyss because that's a huge thing in Hawaii. They were, pop. Yeah, they were a huge. Where, influence. where, did, where did they, they come from? Them. Like what from was all the, over. Yeah. And how Some did of they, them from Big Island. You know, they're all brothers, all black guys. Yeah. That, you know what I mean? Some of them were military T-Bone and, you know, Master Fu. And yeah. there was a bunch of them. And um, probably like 20. And they, we should, I just remember these Soul 69 epic 20 on 20 MC battles. Right. And that's where you came in yep. and, and you put in. I was like, man, man, let these other cats get some. You know, and <laughs> let them get some. You know what I mean? Because right, right, right. those cats be hogging things. Because I remember even at the... ITF, I was the last DJ doing the final thing, and I had like Abstract Rude, and I had one of the guys from uh, Cold Crush Brothers and uh, Chief Sun. Was it Chief Sun from LA? Chief Sun. That's Monster uh, Big Time's brother. Okay, okay. Monster and Big Time. Yeah. They're from LA, some one guys, and they're rhyming with us too. Wow. Yeah, they they're dope, man. But uh, yeah. So people that don't know what was the abyss, who was the abyss? Cause I'm gonna frame it as high state was cats. high state was all local local guys yeah, from yeah. all over. Y'all clicked up, and some of the the local brothers were black yeah. local black brothers too. That they're, they're from Big Island, right, right, right. That you know, but then the Abyss came and they kind of came in. Yeah, they're on that. They were on that woo yeah. game where bitches mob beat. That, yeah, Wu Tang. Like yeah, they had that ugh, grit, that gritty. They could rhyme though. And what was the static at that time? It was just ego. The high it, was, state. it was just ego. It's just like mic time recognition. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and all culminated to. And you know how people are. Like, I, I mean, I've seen it with friends, bro. Like, people that love each other, they're close. And then when the rhyme just gets too much, right. it's like they get personal. Yeah. And your feelings and your ego trip gets offended. Like, you know. Do you think that was a good thing? Uh, I thought it was a great thing. Yeah. Because I, I, I did. Be, I did music with all of them. Yeah. You know. So like. I mean, if you could have your shit together, you could, you know? Right, right, right. right. It's like, because I just think sparring and natural, like, resistance is good for you. Right, right. If your crew can't give you resistance, then how the hell are you guys going to make it, dog? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because the minute you show up, everybody's going to be like, man, you can't even rhyme. Shut up. So do, so was there, was there ever a thing where it was like a more of a local thing, Hawaii versus, like, mainland thing? No, I don't, Hawaii, I don't think you know, so. Locals versus... I've, the- I always thought of them as, you know, the business locals. I mean... You know, I didn't see them as any different. You know, I grew up in Oakland, so growing up with brothers has always been, you know, I've always been really close to the black community. And, like, you know, it's like they they were just other MCs to me, you know. So a lot of the battles went down on Soul 69. Yeah, a lot of them. for people that don't know. Man, those were some epic ones. There were some great recordings. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I don't know if I have any of them because I was there. I don't know either. (laughs) So I wasn't recording anymore. You were there a couple times. I was there, but, you know, it's funny. I used to record, and when I went there, And then those even turned to brawls. Yeah, I was I was never a part of that. Thank God. Thank God. Yeah, no, you know what? It, it was dumb because oh, I got some I got some stories that the people would be like, "Oh, I'm embarrassed," because it's like I was embarrassed for them when I seen it. Well, you know, well, it was crazy. But I mean, when I went there, the names that I'd seen there was crazy because you'd have you'd have Fresca. Yeah, I'm you'd have Fresca. Spaz would be there. Right. Elite would be there. Yeah. Eddie L would be there, and these right. are all main, like technically mainstream DJs. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. they would always go there. Right. And Danny One Asia. DJ Asia. Asia. Asia's um, bad, bad. DJ bad. Min. A lot of big up uh, to Asia. Yeah, definitely. Shout out to Asia. Who else was there when we see that? Of course, all high state. But of course, you had Itaro and you had Size yeah, One. Yeah, of course. Um, then you had Derek D. That was their show, big Itaro. And so, you know, Itaro. Yeah. And he brought in, you know, Sizer. And yeah. And that was a great time for hip hop. I don't know rare how form. long their show. They were called Rare Form. Yeah, how long their show. Um, I don't went know, for, some years, a couple years. But three that years, was a pinnacle point for Hawaii hip hop because. That it, was the. Golden era. Yeah. I think that was the golden era in hip hop period though. I think so too. You know what I mean? Like that's just when it was like it was a self it had its own homeostasis. It was birthing its own new stuff and you know what I mean, recycling and And I feel at that time too, we weren't like like you know, I'm, I'm all the same ages, all the knockers and stuff like that. We were all not trying to sound like anybody like anybody else. Yeah. I really feel like we were Steve. creating our own sound. We right, really were. Right. Like, nobody sounded like well, any of us. Well, you could tell, you know, when people would come into that town and we get to open for them. And, you know, the Cypher Circles, they would open up. And, you know, cats are, because even Abstract Root said it on that uh, La Costa song that we did that, you know, we're freestyles in the islands. We're freestyling is still, you know, appreciated. Yeah. You know, like, because the heavyweights, they were like the monsters of L.A., you know. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they don't even get enough. The heavyweights don't even get enough rep in L.A., dude. Yeah. They, they made a difference in my eyes. 
that whole good life cafe thing, you know. Yeah, I mean? And you work, you've worked with Abrud and yeah. AC Long. Yeah, I know well, they super influenced me. Right, like that was one of the dreams that I had was, and they were like some of my heroes, you know. Yeah, it's like the, the uh, AC that Aloha track, the AC with AC Long and says self cause of AC Aloha. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and then the the track with Abrud and yeah, like I, said, I did a couple of tracks, with, but not everything got out. But you know, not really anything got out. <laughs> but I would just I have to be thankful that it even happened, right? Because you know, the treasure of life is a journey. Yeah, yeah. It's not what you make. It's not the paper. It's, you know, when you if you can reflect back and be like, wow, it's been a good life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it should be a good death. Nice. So a lot of your sound that you created in that era, for, so talking about the era, you worked with AC, AC Alone, and you worked with Ab Rude and the High State Cats and, and Walter. Mikey Dredd was one of the, I remember Mikey Dredd, I got thrown out of my apartment for that one. Oh, he's recording? <laughs> yeah, because we were doing Capital Fat up at uh, Big City. Right. It was a Tuesday night, and he didn't have a place to take two women. He's like, and uh, two groups wanted to do a dub play with him for advertisement. Wow, okay. So I had a beat for him. I kicked him off a beat, and then he's, yeah, yeah, man, you know, because I had herbs, so he was going to go back and burn in my place. And he's like, yeah, man, he had a girl with him he wanted. And my roommate, who is, was, was not even a music head, like, but he knew who Mikey Dredd was. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, I was like, man, we're going to get thrown out. And he's like, <laughs> and he go, it's Mikey Dredd. What? Bro. Like a once in a lifetime, Mikey's passing. Rest in right. peace, Mikey Dredd. Yo. You know, foundation, bro. Dredd at the controls. Yeah. Yeah, man. Like, you know, great man. Great yes. man. Hula Reggae. I remember he was a song. And Johnny Sexton from Simplicity. Man, he helped me hash that track out. Wow. Johnny Sexton from Simplicity was really a huge influence. I mean, Instrumental wise, musician wise. Did you have ties to local musicians? A lot of local. Yeah, musicians? I knew a lot of. Good, well, you know, because I was doing battle bands at Dave and Buster's with Taco. Okay. You know, you know, like doing audio for that. Yeah. Which is always stress because man, you know, the first band, there's no pressure, but when that eight o'clock changeover comes, right? Bar is full. You know, trying to yeah. get their wedges in there to be able to hear each other. And like, you said go. Like I didn't say go. You know, and then they can't hear, and then. They like lick you, yeah. <laughs> you know. It's like, yeah, Jimmy Taco. I had a studio with him for a while too. Okay. Yeah, and uh, did you um put? Did you produce anything for um for Tasho on any of his albums when no. he went solo? No, no. Tasho's he's at, he's had it on his own. Yeah, you know what I mean. He's like Tasho's a very instrumental person, bro. Immerse is like he's a go getter. Yeah, definitely. You know, he's like makes things happen. Invisible in Corp. You know what I mean? Like, most people don't even remember Invisible, but, like, yeah. that was a good record. That was a really good record, yeah. Mm-hmm. Shout out to uh, Gijo. Shout out to Gijo no, for Doug. sure. Mr. Rios, bro. Yeah. I love that guy. Yeah. Slept on. I mean, you know, he's such a humble dude. He is such he a humble dude. He doesn't want any of this. But he's I feel like, you know, dude. people need to know, like, you know. That Family guy, man. That guy, yeah. that guy is definitely. Uh, oh, he made a huge difference. Like, you know, like, I know Buzz was extremely loyal to him. Yeah. Buzz one was, like, that was their childhood friend. And then, like, he's like, yeah, Mr. Rios. And then. It was crazy how that thing just evolved into its own, and then it even incorporated us. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. you know, like I say, got its own momentum so much that we just became part of it. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you said you you started branching out and making and producing and spinning other other types of genres of music. Yeah, why, I, I why, like, why so? Why it's earth music, you know? Right. Like for every place and every time, there's a vibe. There's a music that like it ties me to my feelings and my experience. You know, it's like the force field of my life. It protects me from things. It like it makes me feel good. It's like it's God sent. Yeah. I'm grateful to the Lord for right, 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 right. for music because it's it's been the thing that has been my best friend my entire life. It's been it's been the constant. It's the constant. The constant. You know what I mean? And right. it doesn't matter where it's been, different songs take me to different places. Yeah. And remind me about different people, you know. Yeah, I have yeah, yeah. A real broad array of friends. And associates and acquaintances and you know it takes everything to be everything and yeah. I might not agree with everything but I do right. think that the good the bad the ugly it's all beautiful yeah you know because you need contrast right rigidity yeah. it's not any one thing is everything in relation to everything else right it makes things stand out you know yeah it's like colors when you graph piecing you want colors that yeah. contrast yeah. because they stand you know make your lines pop. Yeah, yeah pop. something's got to set in set, something's got to pop. Exactly. If everything just mushes together, it's <laughs> yeah. and but Flat. at times but at times it has to. Right. You know, you you get to that point. It's an evolution like art. I believe the spirit of art is an incredible thing. I've always 
I try and look at my life as art. You know, I apply it as because when you can get away, you know, art gives you a lot of leeway. If you're being artistic, you know, right. you're not so constrained by the the normality of thought. Like, oh, you're not doing this. Like, yeah, man, because I'm, you know, I'm appro- approaching this from an artistic perspective. Right. Creation, you know what I mean? I have no boundaries. I have no thoughts. And, you know, like art is the thing that the human spirit can take in and process like roots music, roots reggae music, mm, Bob. Yeah. And then that suffrage, that suffer song, they regurgitate it. And man, there's just millions of people who live on that alone. They have nothing, but they have roots. You yeah, know what I mean? They have music. Yeah. And to be able to internalize that suffrage and then externalize it as a piece of art that's beautiful, it's amazing. Yeah. It's like, it's magical. Yeah. That's a gift. It, it, it's truly one I of mean, the magical. I mean, we all have it, but you know, some of us hone the gift. Yeah. Some people are stronger than others. Yeah. But you know what? Even to get a taste of it is a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's like it's a gift. Yeah. Life is a gift. Be yeah. present. Yeah. You know. So speaking of music, let's take it to the future. I mean, you've seen artists, you've worked with artists, you've seen the highs, the lows of of hip hop in Hawaii. What do you think would it would take, or why hasn't anybody hit that mainstream or like broken out from Hawaii? What what is it? What is it hold, holding us back? What is the? Do you have a formula? Do you have any insight into why that has not happened yet? I think it ain't which which you're about is who you know in most things in this world, you know what I mean. That like, and you know what? In reflection, I'm glad I never really made a music. There's too much devil idolatry and like you know what I mean. Yeah. So many things that are under the surface that. You know, I'm just trying to give thanks and praises. I'm trying to live thanks. Right, right, right. You know what I mean, like. I don't need the money. Like the money doesn't make me. It doesn't hurt me. You know what I mean? It's like it's it's there and it influences everything. But when it becomes the the majority of your influence, it's tainted. Mm. You know what I mean? Life music is what it's about. You know, like the soundtrack to my life. You know, that's why when Bahi reposted that stuff, it was like, <coughs> wow. I really needed that. Like I said, it brought me to tears because I had lost all that stuff. And I was like, and so many people I truly love that I have nothing but those memories. You know what I mean? Right. To have the song is really nice. Yeah. To have the song and to be able to like, wow. You know, and like some of the songs on that album were like really personal. It was about the breakup of my family, you know. Yeah, and like, yeah, yeah. It was like so many of it. It's like. If I made nothing at all, I truly count it as my wealth because I was here. I got to create. I got to live on earth. I got to be blessed and bless others. Yeah. And, you know, like, that's really what it's about. Like, money fades. You you know, you can't buy integrity. and You know, you can buy fake love. But true love is understanding and unconditional support. You know, it's like they're rarities. You have to cherish that. Yeah. You know, embrace it and be thankful for it. And like I said, there's a lot of evil in the money of this world. And the corporate structure of music is, they're slave master, man. They're mm. slave master. I mean, Prince was saying his whole life about, you know, the percentages that were taken. It's just, it's underhanded, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. they're owning your, I mean, they're not even creating, you know? They're just, they're the money men. But... Money makes the world go around. Oh, no, that's a triple force. Yeah. That's what makes the world go around. It ain't money. Right, right. But, you know, it gets twisted. And I don't know. I'm not into the twist. No yeah. offense, Chubby Checker. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. Danny One with the knowledge. Danny One. It's just thank, life experience. Thank, thank you. you for everything, my man. Love, I appreciate respect. everything yeah, bro. that you've done for me as well as for oh, my for, for me. And for blessing all of us. You know, it's selfish. I did it all for me because... This is what I do. It's my life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, as long as I'm alive, I plan on just expressing myself right, because right. if not, I might blow up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. hundred percent. I know what it's you mean. therapy, bro. Yeah, it is therapy. Yeah, it is therapy. You know? And yeah. That's, I deserve to be okay. Right. And that's all I'm ever striving to do. Mm. Have a good life. Have a good death. Be okay. Live thanks and be grateful. Yes. And on that note, this is Alanui Mele with Danny One on PBS Hawaii. Bless. Peace.